But another issue, issue has arisen around the cricket. In a piece in the weekend, um, Dominion Post Weekender, which is Woke Stuff's Saturday paper, uh, there was a piece by a journalist called Zoe George, who I imagine is quite woke, given the piece she wrote. It's called The Sordid History Behind the Basin Reserve's Wakefield Menor- uh, Memorial. And the Wakefield Memorial, if you've been to the Basin Reserve, is a little kind of Greek columned cupola um, that sits, I think, on the western bank or in the west, in the middle of the western bank at the Basin Reserve as you come down out the Mount Vic Tunnel, I think you can see it. It's an old sort of, I don't know, memorial. It's not a statue. And it is in memory of a guy called William Wakefield. Or it's a memorial to William Wakefield. Uh, I think the brother of Edward Gibbon Wakefield and they're the guys who set up the, uh, was it the New Zealand Company and came out here and tried to commercialise terrible white park uh, colonial colonisation. And because he was in his time a leading light uh, as one of the, the Wakefields, um, I think back in the 1850s or 1860s, they threw up this monument to him, which has stood the test of time and I imagine a few earthquakes. But apparently it's a massive problem. Apparently there's a public debate on getting rid of it, tearing it down, because apparently he wasn't the nicest man in the world. Well, he was a coloniser, that's a terrible, terrible thing. He was white, that's a terrible, terrible thing. And uh, he um, apparently ran off back in Scotland. He he nicked a 14-year-old woman he wanted to marry or his brother wanted to marry, and they kidnapped her and took her up to the Scottish Highlands. Not the sort of thing you do these days. Not in um, civilised Western uh, society. Um, So now, apparently, uh, and his contribution to colonisation recognised in the monument, it's a heritage-listed Greek column structure first commissioned in the 1850s, which is now located within the walls of the Basin Reserve. Uh, So apparently he abducted a 14-year-old heiress in the tumultuous time, and he didn't always get on with Māori local Māori at his time in Wellington. So apparently now there is a call, there's a debate, I'm told, over whether or not to get rid of it, whether or not to pull a Black Lives Matter, let's pull down the statues sort of thing on the Wakefield Memorial. And it is a global trend and a global uh, movement started by the Taliban, I think, to destroy um, monuments, statues, pieces of history which... Um, woke lefties find, well, problematic, I think is the word they used. But in this article, which goes on to quote some academic and a a couple of Wellington City councillors, apparently there's some debate. So I thought we'd get into it. And one of the people who says they've got a problem with the um, Wakefield Memorial is Nika Winera. He's a Wellington City councillor and he joins us uh, on the line uh, now. Uh, Nico, uh, welcome to the platform. Nice to have you with us. Hey, g'day, Sean. Um, all right. When did you realise what a terrible man William Wakefield was, and who told you? I see. So, I was I was quite new to the sordid history, as the article puts it, of the New Zealand Company. Um, but once I entered university and started learning more about the early settlements and colonisation of the Wellington area. Um, I realised what a fascinating character, to put it uh, quite charitably, this this young William was. And um, from there, I've I've learned more about the. What did you study at varsity? Team. What did you study at varsity, Nico? A number of things. Um, I studied music composition, um, tonga pura performance, Māori language, German language, big old pick and mix. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So. Have you always had this burning desire to engage on this issue? Did it become... I'm just wondering who started this debate. Mm. So I think, I think you're quite right, actually, to, to mention that it came to, head, came to a head in the West um, during the Black Lives Matter movement, um, although I wouldn't say that it's a new idea. I guess the conversation for me really is about how we choose to honour our past and what kinds of history and whose kinds of history we choose to show physically in the form of memorial. Mm. So you're saying this is all about your thoughts 
rather than a group of people coming to you and say, we're just outraged that William Wakefield's memorial's there? I think my, I think it's pretty clear that my thoughts are shared by quite a number of people within the city. How, how many? Um, You've done a although, survey? You've done a survey? Or just Zoe George and another academic and another councillor? <laughs> well, I, see that, I think the thing is that a lot of people aren't aware of the role of this memorial or whom exactly it Well, it just sits there inert. It doesn't really do much, does it? No, it's good, good for a drink and a bit of shade. But yeah. I think people, people realise they were sitting under the... Uh, <laughs> under the auspices of a sexual predator, a kidnapper and a colonizer, they might feel, uh, you know, they might think twice about that sort okay. of water. Okay, so you are, in theory, hang on, just trying to get this straight. So you're, in theory, you think any representation, memorial to mention of people who have been bad in the past, whatever the context of the times they lived in, should be erased. Yeah, I think, to be honest... So just is, that's a yes. You believe that anyone who's behaved, behaved badly in the past, if they're memorialised or remembered, they should be erased. You said yes. Erased is not, is not the correct term. There are ways to remember people and there are ways to honour people. A statue is a way to honour someone. A history book is the way to remember someone. Okay, this isn't a statue. It's just... It's weird. It's... <laughs> It's an old thing that I don't think people, many people will give the time of day to. Look, on that theory, given that that's your strongly held view, what do you make of Porirua, Porirua's Terapraha Arena? Um, well, actually, as my uh, great, 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 great granddad, I think he was a great dude. Yeah, but what he did was he terrorised other Māori, <laughs> he enslaved people and he waged war on peaceful civilian populations, Māori and Pākehā. So shouldn't we erase, yeah. working on your theory, shouldn't we erase Te Rapra? So, <laughs> so I, don't, I don't really have time to relitigate the entire history of Te Heke Mai Irara from 1922. No, 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 but I'm sorry, let's go here. back to <laughs> basics. Bad people should, should not be memorialised. So I presume well, well, you're going to launch yeah, a campaign <laughs> to change the name of Te Rapraha Arena and have any memorials to um, Te Rapraha <laughs> removed. Oh man, I was wondering when this would come up. So I would, I would contend that he was not, in fact, a bad dude. Um, really, you know, did, really, there, did he yeah, take slaves? Just, just let's run through. Between. Let's run through your definition of bad dude. <laughs> okay, let's yeah, run I through. Will. Okay, so, so did yeah, so. he take slaves? <laughs> did Wakefield take slaves? Did the New Zealand did, company... No, no, no. no they actually, I don't know that Wakefield did, actually. But my question is about Tarapra. Did he take slaves? Mm. Did his followers practice um, cannibalism? Did he wage <laughs> oh, war yeah, and terrorise a civilian, uh, peaceful Maori, uh, other peaceful Maori tribes? <laughs> it's, yes it's, or no? It's they're simple questions. Nika, they're actually. simple questions, Nika. <laughs> so th there is a qualitative difference between industrial settler capitalism and. Bullshit in there is. We, There's people uh, oh, who are good dudes, bad dudes, or people in their context. Don't try and dress uh, this. Like, uh, this is a simple question. Did he do those things? Yes like or no? One. <laughs> what am I yes or knowing now? Sorry, did I'm, he take slaves, wage war on... Oh, uh, uh, he did? Did he practice cannibalism he and allow his followers to practice cannibalism? Uh, yeah, probably. Yep. Okay, so that's yes to all that. But you got no problems with Te Rapraha Arena. But Edward Gibbons Wakefield um, runs off with some 14-year-old heiress, which is a bit of a naughty thing to do, and doesn't get on too well with a few Māori in Wellington. And he's got to be expunged. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, there, as I was... On the good dude that, scale, on the good and, dude scale, yeah. take away their race. Who's the gooder <laughs> dude? Um... So, so race is not necessarily the, uh, the determining factor on the good dude scale, as you so eloquently put it. Um, what is difference? What is the difference between the two? Is the context within they are operating? Um, pre pre colonial non European society within Aotearoa had a particular set of kawa of tikanga and rules based on how iwi would relate to one another, based on how they understood conflict and warfare and peacemaking. And killing and each other, eating each other, taking, enslaving each other was cool, in other words. 
<laughs> Goodness. Uh, do, do you feel that's a uniquely Māori situation? No, sure, I don't. And colonising was time. cool in, in uh, European culture. So so why don't you show <laughs> yeah. the same tolerance for Wakefield that you're prepared to show for Tarapra? <laughs> because I feel if, you, if you're going to go after <laughs> Tarapra for engaging in practices which are qualitatively different to settler colonisation... Oranges to the apples, if you will. No, um, it's all the same, actually, Nico. And that is that our history is our history. And we can't Indeed. erase it. I mean, I was looking at the last group of people who really got seriously into, before Black Lives Matter, tearing down statues and destroying historical things because they found them offensive. And I guess the Taliban were the last people in modern history who really got into that. <laughs> something of a hysterical example, I feel. But, no, uh, I think fact, it's called factual. I'm not the person. I'm not the person who called <laughs> um, a basin reserve thing. What was it? Sordid history. That's hysterical, mate. Were those, were those my words? Well, you actually, <laughs> you used them at the very start of this interview. Yes. Yeah, I thought it, I thought it was quite a funny term. I think um, Ms. George actually hit the nail on the head with that one. <laughs> um, yeah, look. The, the, as I said, statues serve a purpose. You know, they're a physical representation of who we value as a society, whose history and contributions we value. There are other ways to remember people, and I don't feel that it's necessary. So, look, I, look, I, so I was seriously thinking it. about, I would be, I just think pulling down a hunk of concrete is just woke claptrap, to be honest. Uh, Nico, I think that's part of our history, like it or not. And if we erase it, we don't learn from our history because we erase our history. I'd be quite cool for a new plaque on it saying, here's some controversial stuff maybe you didn't know about William Wakefield. Do, do you feel anyone has sat under that statue red? <laughs> no, probably God. not. So, the, is, whole so, so the whole point is, Nico, you're a Wellington City Council. I presume you were elected to the Māori Ward? Correct. Yeah, OK. Um, all right. Um, so, Nico, you are in a city... That water oh, yeah. uh, structure is, is falling to bits. I, our office is located in a place which is like beggar's alley with people who, who need way more care than they're getting, causing public um, problems up and down Manor Street every single day. And the most important yeah. thing you can do is say, could you please pull down a hunk of concrete because it makes me feel culturally uncomfortable. So the the wonderful thing about local politics, Sean, is that it's not actually a zero-sum game. We have, um, obviously, the annual plan meeting in about two hours at which we're going to approve um, a number of spending measures to solve our infrastructure crisis that has been done, yeah. uh, which has been handed down to us by progressive underinvestment by previous councils. But if there is the chance to re-examine our local geography and look at ways that we can tell different stories and honour different histories yeah. than maybe the ones that don't necessarily have a place in a modern 21st century Aotearoa, I think it's great to use that opportunity. Yeah, so well. just to check it out, you are cool with Tarapraha, not so down with William Wakefield. Absolutely. All right. You're not related to the Saxons in any way. I just got another friend who's related to, to, to Tarapraha from Nelson. The, the Saxon yeah. as, as a surname? Can't say yeah. that. No, okay, all right, we'll check that out. Um, Nika, can I just say personally, thank you very much for coming on. Thank you for having the conversation. <laughs> You're incredibly welcome. Thank you. Uh, I do not agree with, and I imagine my audience is not going to agree with you in any way whatsoever. And I do think, as They're a councillor in the city I live in, on the council I vote for, you have got better things to do with your time, but it's a free country. <laughs> All right. It is, and I'm going to go and do those better things in exactly an hour and a half. See okay, you later. thank you, Nico. <laughs> that is Nico Winera. Uh, he's actually not a bad sport. Um, um, but Tarapaha is cool. Uh, eight people, enslaved people, waged war on peaceful civilian populations. Tarapaha reason, he's down with that. William Wakefield runs, you won, run off with, you kidnap one 14 year old heiress, and 200 years later, they're coming for you. Just crazy. I'm really interested in your feedback and thoughts on that. I've already got some text.